Welcome to our review on momentum. When we're talking about momentum, we're referring to a vector. And momentum will depend upon two things, the mass of the object and the velocity of the object. The next thing we need to know is the actual formula for calculating momentum. So momentum is the mass times velocity. To give you an example of the kind of question you could be asked about momentum, I've given you one here. A rhinoceros has a mass of 1,500 kilograms. What is its momentum when traveling at eight meters per second in a positive direction? First thing we're going to do, as always with a calculation question, is highlight, underline, circle, or jot down the key bits of information from the question itself. So we've got the two bits in red there for us. Then we need to jot down the formula to calculate momentum, which is mass times velocity. Check the units are in the correct units. So we're in kilograms of meters per second, so we're all good this time round. And then substitute those values in. So 1,500 times positive eight gives us plus 12,000 kilograms meters per second. The next thing we need to consider is the law of conservation of momentum, which just states that in any collision, momentum is conserved. So that means that the momentum before has to equal the momentum after. So if we've got our example of our two ice skaters there, initially their momentum is zero because they're not moving at that point. And when they push away from each other, then the total momentum must equal zero. Because they're moving in opposite directions, obviously that's how they cancel each other out to give us the zero momentum, so that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. So when we think about what happens when objects collide, we could have one of two types of collision. The first of these types of collision is an elastic collision. So this is where the kinetic energy is conserved. So the energy in our kinetic store stays the same, which means that if we used an example of our snooker balls, for example, if the red ball hits the blue one, then the red ball would stop and the blue ball would move off at the exact same velocity that the red ball had. In reality, this isn't really what happens because some of the energy will be transferred to the thermal store by sound. Which brings us on to the other type of collision and in elastic collision, which is where kinetic energy is not conserved. Some of the energy therefore is transferred to other stores. And that's our real example there of our snooker balls colliding. Some of the energy is transferred by sound to the thermal store. Therefore, not all kinetic energy is conserved, which means it's an inelastic collision. We could also see inelastic collisions as an example where the end velocity of the combined objects is lower than that of the original objects. They could ask you to carry out calculations using the momentum equation. And here's an example of one of the kinds of questions you could see. Trolley A with a mass of 200 grams traveling at plus 0.25 meters per second collides with and sticks to trolley B of mass 300 grams, which is stationary. Calculate the velocity of the two trolleys after the collision. First thing we do, as always in a calculation question, is highlight, underline, circle, or jot down the important bits of information so we don't have to keep rereading. And I've done it in red there for you. Next thing to do, we need to calculate the momentum before because we have information about that, which we can then carry out. So the momentum of trolley A plus the momentum of trolley B equals 0.2, which is our mass in kilograms, remember, times by plus 0.25. So that's our trolley A, but we have to add on to trolley B, which we know is stationary, therefore its initial velocity was zero, and its mass, 300 grams, converted to 0.3 kilograms. So our final calculation there is 0.2 times by plus 0.25 plus 0.3 times 0, which gives us plus 0.05 kilogram meters per second as our momentum before. Next thing we need to do is to calculate our velocity. So we can rearrange the equation and 
we get momentum divided by mass. So then we put in our momentum, which is plus 0.05, and we divide that by the mass of 0.5, which is the two trolleys added together because it tells us they stuck together. And that gives us our velocity after of plus 0.01 meters per second. So make sure that you do think logically about the steps and make sure you remember the key thing is that momentum before must equal the momentum after. So that gives us the starting point for the second stage of the calculation. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can define momentum. You can recall the equation to calculate momentum, describe examples of momentum in collisions and carry out calculations using the momentum equation.